This Week in History with Mike and Will. I'm Mike. I'm Will. And it's This Week in History. Bado. If you're just joining us for the first time, where are you been? But if We've not, done like 60 episodes now. If you are, uh, though, uh, here's how the game goes. Uh, Will takes an, event that took, takes an event that took place this day in history. Week. In this history. week in history? Yep. That's right. The name of the show is This Week in History. Yep. Uh, and then he does some research, and then he's got one hour to explain that event to me. Mm-hmm. There we go. And this week's event is... Macbeth. Not an event. Just a... Just a man. Person. Well, <laughs> so... For those who don't know, Mike and I uh, do theater stuff, and we just did a production of Macbeth. And That's true. So I thought it would be important and and uh, relevant to talk about the subject of that play. So that's why I decided to do it. Technically, well, we were supposed to do this one last week, but we were rehearsing and doing other things, so we didn't have a chance to. That's fine. The folks watching this don't know. They don't know. know. They don't care. They don't care. They don't care. Anyway, well, you got one hour. Ready? I'm ready, Mike. Set. Go. <laughs> All right. Macbeth and Mach Finley. Are we going to do this the, oh, whole show, the whole show? That, no, no, but that's it's, it's okay. Macbeth and Mach Finley. Okay. You have to say it with the accent. You yeah. just cannot say yeah. it. Uh, or just Macbeth, McFinley. So Mac means uh, like child of, son of. Mac does. Mac does. Mac the knife. Yes, Mac the knife. Son so he's the, the son knife. of the knife. So um, Macbeth, actually, the name, because it has Mac in it, mm-hmm. means son of something. Macbeth. Um, and what it means is life. Son of life. Oh, so Beth is life. Uh, it's also kind of thought ironic. to be kind of meaning righteous. It's another way of putting it. Uh, and he was born. Mm, nobody really knows exactly, hmm. but he was born somewhere after nine hundred. Somewhere after, <laughs> yep, nine hundred. Uh, I think. And the, before twelve hundred. The, the guess is like around one thousand. Hmm. Okay. About the right time. I think someone should have wrote that down. They really should have. <laughs> but uh, he wasn't supposed to be as famous as he became. No. Uh, he was uh, the grandson of Malcolm II of Scotland, who was a king mm-hmm. at the time. Uh, he is cousin to a fellow named Duncan, who would eventually become king of Scotland. Okay. Um, so that's his relation. Now, uh, this is going to be hard to pronounce. But, is it in Scottish? Oh, these are all Scottish names. All right. So, uh, Macbeth's dad was Finley. It's it's like Finley. It's it, how it's spelt. But we we're gonna Anglicanize as much of this as we can Finley. because it's hard to say, and I don't want to butcher the Scottish language because yeah. you don't they want will to get mad and they will be mad. don't want Scots mad at you. You really don't. Uh, so Finley was what was called the the more mayor, which is like a, a duke. It's a powerful lord. Okay. Uh, more like, mayor. Yeah, they are. He's got more horses. More hair. More more mayors of you know you got the most mayors. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the more mayor is kind of like a, a higher noble, mm-hmm. not quite a duke, but he they they I, I haven't written down what that exactly is, but maybe I should have put it right at the top. Um, but in Scotland, it's basically you are the rank just under king. Like there's the king runs everything, and then the more mayors kind of go and do whatever they want. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the region that he was the the more mayor of is Moray. More mayor. That's yeah. a Moray. That's a Moray. Moray is kind of a, a removed chunk of Scotland in that it's kind of surrounded by mountains and it's it's hard to get to. So whoever runs Moray is just kind of the boss. Okay. They don't really have to listen to the. So game. it's a removed chunk of Scotland, which in Scotland is a removed chunk of England. England. Yeah, it's a, well, Britain, but yeah, it's right. it's hard to get to Scotland, and then this is a harder to get to part of Scotland. Right. Yes, sounds nice. It's probably pretty nice, actually, just very wet and cold most of the time. Well, that sounds it's, lovely. I like that. Some oh. people like that. Uh, other oh. people like to go to, you know, the beach. Mm-hmm. They have beaches in Scotland. Just probably shouldn't swim there because they're cold. Maybe. So anyway, uh, Finley is very powerful and he is kind of a rival to Malcolm the second okay. in that he's he's just he's not really controllable and he kind of does things his own way um, Rebel. now sometime throughout now we don't like I said we don't know much about Macbeth's life but his father was this powerful man and a fellow named Gil, Gil. Congen Mac Mail Brigti yep so, Gil? Gil. All right, Gil. It's, it's G-I-L-L-E. So Gil, 
Uh, and he, Gil does not like Finley at all. Okay. He and his brother, uh, Mal Malcolm. Malcolm. But we're going to call him Male because th- there are there are three other Malcolms. In this, okay. th- there are two mm-hmm. other Malcolms for sure in this story. I think there's a third somewhere too. Mm-hmm. And so we'll call him Male. 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 So Male and Gil uh, decide they don't want Finley to rule over this area this anymore. Chunk of stuff. Right. So they decide to kill him. <laughs> no talking to him? Just yes. Uh, he's let their, my sword be my voice. And here's the thing. He's their uncle. Oh. So they murder their uncle. Yeah, not everyone loves their uncle. But they make the mistake of not finishing off the bloodline. Uh, oh. <laughs> they kill him. They kill him. But Macbeth escapes. Oh. Now, Macbeth knows these guys. They're his cousins, mm-hmm. and they murdered his dad. So he's not too pleased about it. Not too happy. Um, Gil is married to a woman named Gruach. Yep. G-R-U-O-C-H. Gruach. The C-H has a sound. Mm-hmm. And uh, this becomes important. She's a, she's a very important part of our story. Okay. So Gil is married to her. Uh, male dies in... Uh, now, this is in 1020 when they kill everybody. Uh, male becomes... The more mayor, he's the boss now, because okay. I think he's the elder brother. Well, then he dies in 1029, and then Gil takes over. It is thought that Gil maybe killed Malcolm II's like favorite brother, his younger brother. Like he loved this guy, and it's he was assassinated. Mm. So this family just they're murdering everybody. The the Melbrites are just kind of killing folks. And is this an easy thing to do? I mean, are they, not they just really like. I mean, you, you don't have. And these are assassinations. It's not yeah. like a war. No, you're right. These aren't. This isn't in battle. So they're like sending knife men basically into these people's homes and murdering them, or arranging accidents, or mm. setting things up. It, it's very problematic, though. And people always try to paint Scotland as kind of this this backwater where it's just a bunch of savages you know, burning each other's houses down and stuff. This is the kind of political stuff that happens throughout the rest of Europe. So they're just as high-end politically, and they're just as prone to uh, backroom deals and assassinations and things like that. These aren't any more savage or primal than their neighbors. Scottish murderers, just like you. Yep, exactly. They're cap- they have the right to, you know, kill people sure. in a fancy, nice way. They don't just go... Bleh! Hit you with an axe? Not for just for the rich people. Yeah, anyone, right. anyone can kill people. These also happen to be rich people. Mm, okay. Meanwhile, the rest of Scotland is just like the rest of France or England or Ireland, where the peasants are just peasants and they're minding their own business, and the kings keep killing each other, and the lords keep killing each other, and every so often there's a war and the peasants have to fight in it. But I'm sure the peasants have daily trials and tribulations they oh, go through. Totally. And, Compared to nowadays, yeah, there's especially. But uh, they have the... the so there's drama within the village, surely. Probably. But they have a very much, you know, meet the new boss, same as the old boss mm-hmm. kind of a view on things. It's, as long as somebody's not increasing their taxes horribly or just rampaging through their towns, eh. <laughs> there's not this... I mean, it and depends, though. Obviously, if you have a really good leader, the people are very loyal to them and they will fight for them or yeah. they will... Uh, risk a lot more and they're willing to do a lot more for those folks. So. If not, just back to the tape mines. <laughs> where they mine the scotch tape. I'm going to leave now. <laughs> well, we've hardly begun. I know. <laughs> I'm done now. Nope, I'm done. Alright, so Gil is not a nice man. Yeah, he killed people. He's a murderer. Yeah, uh, He's arranged murders, he killed Malcolm's brother, uh, and he killed Macbeth's father. Yeah. So there's some bad blood. Now, at some point in 1029, uh, Gil is in his great hall inside his castle. Nice hall. It's big. Oh, great hall. With uh, 50 of his retainers, soldiers, not teeth. No. Things. That's a lot of retainers. That's a lot of retainers. Mm-hmm. That's too many. Teeth, teeth, um, straight. So he's hanging, hanging out. out with his guys. Yep, having some mead. And somebody barred the doors and set the building on fire. Oh, no. He and his 50 men cooked. No, no. All of them died. There are two suspects. What did the fire marshal have to say about that? (laughs) He was like, this was a bad idea. Should have had two exits. Well, he was probably one of the retainers who got cooked. Oh. Uh, 
This is a bad idea. This is not <laughs> great. <laughs> I should not be in this building right now. There's no windows. <laughs> this yeah. is terrible. There are two possible suspects. Yeah. Malcolm and Lightning. There are three, three possible, possible suspects. <laughs> There's Lightning, Malcolm, mm -hmm. and Macbeth. Yeah. The most likely candidate is Macbeth. He had to wait a long... Now, this is... Like he himself was there? He, Yeah, he might have actually gone and done it. Malcolm would not have. He's a king. He doesn't have to do that. But Macbeth is this has a, the most to gain by this guy dying. Is this a match I see before me? <laughs> Flames <laughs> flickering towards my hand? It could also have been uh, a team-up. Mm -hmm. Because Malcolm is Macbeth's grandpa. Mm -hmm. Okay. And his son was murdered by these guys. Yeah. But these guys are also... They're all family. <laughs> Yeah, they're all related. But what better fa family bonding thing than yep. but you and Grandpa, you yep. and Pop Pop burning down Pop, a building, Pop killing, killing you and Pop uncle. Pop doing Saracen, killing one of his second cousins once removed or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, nice. don't kill the king's favorite son. Yeah, it's good to keep families together. Yep, it, I think the the family that slays together stays together. Mm, that's what I've always been told. So, there are a couple options. What we've got. But the most likely is it was Macbeth because he had the most gain by doing this. Uh, he gets his, basically his throne back. Yeah. Because a, a Mormaer is almost considered a king. They're, they're very powerful. Now, when he kills Gil, he gets his stuff, including his wife. This hey. is a rule of the time. It, it's basically uh, you have to decide what to do with the widow. Well, yeah, you well, marry him or you kill him or you give him to somebody else. Being a widow is a rough gig. Yeah, I bet. They get married, and he actually adopts her son, <laughs> which is pretty cool. I guess. Um, nice. His name is Lulach. So, yeah. Gruach and Lulach. So, Gru and Lu. Yeah. Gru and Lu. But uh, this is a very weird thing for the time. Sure. To adopt the child of the guy who killed your father. Uh, that's yeah. really weird. That argument, you're not my real dad. No, I killed I your killed real dad. I killed your real dad. <laughs> I'm literally the only dad you're ever going to have now, no, unless no. somebody kills me. And uh, there's a you. flaw in your plan. But good luck having somebody adopt you after they kill me. So there. You're going to be the se you're going to be adopted twice in who, your life. Who wants to adopt a kid whose parents keep dying? No, you're a second hand, second hand. You're third hand adoption. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants that. It's like you're the puppy who keeps getting returned to yeah. adoption. Yeah, that just like a... That's sad. Except that the now parents I made myself are getting sad. married. Right. Yeah. Right. So, Macbeth really does this impressive thing of adopting this kid. That's that's a very rare thing. And he makes him his heir. Which is a big deal. So now he is the more mayor. He's in the prime of his life. He's about 30. Uh, he's ready to take the, the reins of power. Good for him. Good for him. So... At some point, also, King Malcolm dies. Natural now, causes? Uh, hold on. Let's see if I remember it. I believe he just got sick and died. Oh. He's a bit old. Okay. Now, he does not have a clear line of succession at this point. He had all this time to I die. know. It's kind of dumb. The whole thing with this is that um, there is a... It's patrilineal, so it's the father's side controls everything, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the problem with this was that Duncan is connected to Malcolm on his mother's side, not his father's side. So he's immediately, that's a weaker claim. Okay. Whereas Macbeth, that's grandpa. Mm -hmm. That's straight up through the dad's side through the of the family. Yeah. Uh, like he's, he is technically the closest kin. But Macbeth does not immediately claim the throne. He doesn't say that he's got the... He's content to be the more mayor. No. He's powerful, or he's, he's wealthy. Or he's playing the waiting game. Yep. Or he's playing the waiting game. He's independent. He pretty much has what he wants, and he doesn't really need the headache. Yeah. Duncan's rule is more immediately money, more shaky. Uh, what this was called the patrilineal descent, they call that tanistry. Um, it's right. the Scottish way of phrasing yeah, it, basically. It. But it's, you're supposed to be able to trace your family line through your father's side to the king. Uh, it's supposed to go to the next boy in the line connected to the father. Yeah. So there's a thought that this is the end of Tanistry in Scotland because Duncan steps in and he's like, aha, I'm going to be the king. Hmm. 
but it's a really shaky claim. Now, Duncan's only about 30. He's a young man, contrary to the play Macbeth, where Duncan is elderly and frail. Yeah. Duncan is frail in, they think, mind and body in that he's kind of weak. Mm -hmm. But usually, if you were considered an ineffective king back then, they would just say you were physically or mentally yeah. incapable. Yeah. And they would dogpile on it. You yeah. know, like, and, and it wasn't necessarily that he was this worthless king. Mm -hmm. But he's not great. Okay. So, uh, Duncan the first, he's the first one of his kind that becomes king. He was born in 1001-ish, uh, and he becomes king the 25th of November in 1034. Macbeth is referred to as a duke, or dukes. It, uh, the dukes is, uh, the D-U-X is a, a, the Latin term for it. Oh, wow. This is a really high title, like, there isn't anybody else in Scotland that's called that. Uh, it's a very rare title in that uh, there were contemporary dukes who were actually more powerful than kings. Uh -huh. In France, uh, the guy who was referred to as the duke there, was he was the mayor of the palace, and he was actually in more control of the throne than the king was. He had way more power. Uh, there was also a duke in... Uh, let's see if I wrote his name down. Probably not. There was a duke, though, at the time in England who was way more powerful than the king and he was considered kind of a runaway powerhouse. It was a little much. So to be called a duke is a huge deal. And it's kind of an honorific given to him by other people. Okay, well, so it's that not like an official title? It's not really an official title, yeah. which kind of rubs the king the wrong way. Because mm. he sees these other powerful dukes at the time in other countries who have more power than the king, and it's basically like saying you can't control your own noble, he's more powerful than you. Okay. And there's also this shaky connection to the throne already, and Macbeth having a, a better claim. So Duncan doesn't really like Macbeth. Um, at the <coughs> time, there's a fellow named Knut the Great. Knut? Knut the Great, who we've yeah. talked about. Knut yeah. the Great was the king of Norway, of Denmark, and of England at the time. He was a Viking. He's one of the most powerful kings throughout history. He was extremely well respected and very powerful. He was strong. He was smart. He was great. He was great. He earned the title. He went to Scotland to basically secure their submission. He's like, I can invade, or you just say that everything's good and you'll pay me basically a ransom to not burn you down. Oh, nice. Submission. Which is good for him. When he's there, this is according to the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle. Get your Anglo-Saxon Chronicles. Yep. So this was, so this, I have to go back a little bit before uh, Duncan becomes king. Because this is in 1031, so Macbeth is the more mayor. Canute the Great wants submission in Scotland, and he goes to meet Malcolm II. And it describes that Malcolm was there with two other kings... Macbeth, and uh, this is a hard one to say. I e h m a r c, Yermak, I think. So, the chronicle refers to Macbeth as a king. That's how powerful he is. And Yermak uh, is probably another more mayor of the region. Yeah, probably. This is the Anglo-Saxon chronicle, so it's not written by a local guy. It's not written by a Scot. It's written by the Anglo-Saxons who are the English. Oh yeah. He probably had a so dumb he's time like saying their name too. Yeah, he's like, uh, like yeah, I, I don't know. This looks right. Throw some scab scrabble tiles at. Yep. Uh, so this is a big deal. The the, the title Mormare is uh, Gaelic, so that's the same language that's spoken in Ireland. Uh, slightly different in the Irish Gaelic and the Scots Gaelic, and then Earl is the term used in Scots which is it's actually its own language. Yeah. Because it, it developed differently than English just enough. So, like, the way they spell things is, is different. Like, no is spelled N-A-E, and it's pronounced ne. 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 So that accent of theirs is actually not just an accent. It's a mm. language thing. So that's a big part of it. It's a very, yeah. it's a very interesting thing. So that explains, like, the, the titles a little more clearly, I think. Because I, I, I wanted to go into that because... Earl and Mormere were used interchangeably, and I was like, what? Are they the same thing? And they are the same thing. It's just a language Got it. thing. So this also proves Shakespeare's wrong, because at the end of Shakespeare, 
uh, when uh, the good guys beat Macbeth. Spoiler in Shakespeare, Macbeth is this is the villain. Yeah. Um, Malcolm the Third proclaims that there will be earls made of all of these nobles, the first of their kind. That's not true. The earl has been around for a while. More mares are earls. It's the yeah. same thing. So that's incorrect. Artistic license. Other oh, artistic license is incorrect. Duncan is not old. Yeah. Okay. So you, now you, we've, you write a play. I can't. I, I mean, well, I could, but I wouldn't make. I could write a play, but it wouldn't necessarily be good, and it mm. probably won't hold up to Shakespeare. Okay. There's a reason why Shakespeare's version of it is different, and I'll get to that at the end. Oh, go ahead. So, uh, Duncan's rule, like we said, is is shaky, and Macbeth is really powerful. We've got uh, all these people talking about how like Macbeth was kind of a big deal, and even before Duncan was king, they were con- they were comparing him to kingship. They were mm. like, this is a big deal. It's a big deal. Now, here we get a fun little Viking saga bit. Hey, little Viking I, I love story. My, I love my Vikings, and uh, uh, they've had an interaction already with Knut the Great. At this time, Thorfinn the Mighty. Thorfinn? Thorfinn the Mighty. Thorfinn. Thorfinn. They don't pronounce the H, but Thorfinn the Mighty. I just made it very Thorfinn the Mighty. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's the Earl, another Earl, of Orkney. The Orkney Islands are in the north of Scotland and the east of Scotland, and they are an ideal landing point for Vikings. They sail there, they live there, eventually they grew a culture there, and then, so nowadays, like, there are descendants of Vikings that still live in Scotland. It's this whole thing. Um, So they settle there, and they're fierce warriors, and they become eventually landed nobility that are part of the kingdom of Scotland. Thorfinn has his own saga. Uh, It's part of this the entire saga of the, the, the Orkney Islands. And Torfin's a real guy. Torfin. Who's called the Mighty because he was apparently really, really, really strong. Like, freakishly, you know, those types of people where you're sure. like, how are you that strong? And he's just really, really strong. Um, of course, in the saga, they probably, they overblow a little bit. You yeah. Know, he's bending iron bars and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, mighty. He had, according to this... Uh, his mom, this is a big deal, is one of Malcolm's daughters. So he's actually related to King Malcolm as well. Oh, okay. So um, he's he's Malcolm's grandson, but through a woman. <coughs> so ah. he's got the same level of claim to the throne as Duncan does. Right. Work for him. Yeah, work for him. In his saga, he describes that he has an enemy named Carl Hundeson, which is like Carl, like the dog. Hundeson is a dog, yeah. like the son of the dog. He's a cur, he's a scumbag. Oh, so even his name is insulting. Mm-hmm. There is no Scotsman named Carl Hundeson. There's no Scotsman named Carl, and there's certainly no Scot with the last name Hundeson. They're not sure exactly who he is. They think it's one of two people. Uh, again, this is tricky. And this also might not be real because there aren't a lot of Scots records of this campaign against each other. Who's this guy it, named Carl? According to them, Carl is Duncan. A student, uh, like a like he's. It's just their Viking name up for that they give oh. for him. It's, it's their Norse name they gave him. Sure. They give him this insulting name. Yeah, it doesn't sound complimentary the, at all. The other so, the other thought is maybe it was Macbeth, but Macbeth is recorded that this is before Macbeth is even vying for kingship that this apparently happened. Mm. But there was a campaign against the Orkneys and the Scots got their butts kicked. It was really one-sided and there was a lot of fighting and it was a disastrous campaign. And this Carl Hundeson was sent packing and it made him look weak. Now, Duncan at this exact time is being challenged by all of these other nobles who start to rally around Macbeth and they're like, why don't you vie for the kingship? Duncan's not a great king, and I think if if this actually happened, if if the saga is accurate, my interpretation of it would be that Duncan led a campaign north to rid the Scots of, you know, their Viking scourge, and kind of as an act of nationalism and showing that he's the big guy, he's the new boss, and it went miserably, and it made him look weak, Mm. and that contributes to his kind of downfall in the eyes of his fellow Scots. Another thing that happened at the time is then in 1039, Duncan led a campaign into Durham, which is in um, 
England at the time. It's English controlled. And it was this big raid and it went horribly wrong. And again, he got crushed and sent back. So he keeps losing credibility. He keeps losing power. He keeps losing soldiers. So yeah. is it worth it? Yeah, it's not it's not great. And the rest of the nobles, especially all the more mayors, are like, this is bad. This guy's an idiot and he's going to ruin our country. Yeah. So they are this this Viking saga, if it happened, I think most likely happened with Duncan. I don't think it happened with Macbeth because Macbeth is ri- is a rising star at this point and Duncan is a falling one. No. So that's my thinking. Yeah. I just like to in, in, incorporate this because I thought it was really cool that Thorfinn talks about some guy who did not exist. But if he did, he's the name that he gave to Duncan, yeah. and he basically calls the guy a dog, which I think yeah. is hilarious. Carl. Carl the dog. Carl the dog. Carl the cur. Not even a nice dog name. Oh, like, sure. it's like cur. It's it's like a, a cruddy, awful dog that nobody likes. Aww. Cur. Yeah, I feel bad for a dog that's a cur, but yeah. not a human that's a cur. You know, then it's a curs need cur. love too. It's a really, really insulting name. Yeah, it sounds like uh, it. put together, it's <laughs> it's like the sum of all its parts are actually worse than what the actual yeah. pieces mean. So Duncan is basically on the ropes. He's getting pummeled on all sides. He he's ineffective. He also starts making people angry because of his taxing. And he's uh, you know, his money don't for get the, the war. crowd against you. So now you've got yeah, he just basically insulted everybody, and he's making everybody mad. So Macbeth is like, uh, yeah, this guy sucks, and he's kind of more public about it. So Duncan decides I'm going to nip this in the bud, and he invades Mornay or Moray, not yeah. Mornay. It's a hard place to get to. It's a hard place to get to. Hard apparently, to hard thing to say. Yeah. Uh, so he invades. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a great idea, because he's already you know he's been winning so much and he's clearly a great campaigner. At the Battle of Pit Gavney, which we don't have a lot of details about, Duncan leads his army in. It's a few hundred soldiers, probably all foot troops, because Scotland is not good for cavalry. It's just terrible for it. Yeah. And it's a very one-sided whooping. Like Macbeth crushes his army. And Duncan is either killed in battle or dies shortly after from his wounds. Oh. So another thing that's different than uh, the Scottish play yeah. is that Duncan is not murdered. And he and Macbeth are never friends. There is no loyalty there. There is This guy is a bad king. He's not a kind king. He's not a most sainted king, yeah. as is said in the uh, story. And he started the fight. And he started the fight. Macbeth did not invade. Macbeth never left his country. Macbeth never said, I hate you, I'm going to be the king. Hmm. Macbeth, and this is according to three sources. Uh, two different chronicles. There's the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle. I forget to write down the other chronicle. And then <laughs> this prophecy, which we don't take for... Uh, prophecy? It's a prophecy. From witches? Yes, from yes, from a witch. There's something <laughs> he got right. Yeah, that, that, that one he did get right. But that one is not considered a really reliable source because mm. it's kind of fictitious, and I think it was written after the fact... Or, Something like that, right? And after more the fact. exciting, though. But it is much more exciting to have a prophecy. Sure. Um, especially since there are so few prophecies. Now, that's a pretty good one. Yeah, um, they're easy to write if you write them after the fact. Yes, those are the best ones. Will will buy a coffee today. Mm. <laughs> oh my god, it happened! How did he know? <laughs> prophecy. Prophecy. So, this is a bad day for Duncan. Duncan's dead now, or dying yeah. at the it's battle, a bad and day, then yeah. he dies. Uh, Immediately after now, you keep what you kill, <laughs> and Macbeth is king of Scotland. Yeah, and is. everybody is actually quite happy with this arrangement. Mm. Uh, he's stronger. He's he's actually a little older than Duncan. Uh, he's considered more reliable, and he's definitely more successful. So he's popular. All right. Um, he doesn't do a lot to make problems. He doesn't make waves. He's a waveless king. Although he is called the Red King by some people, which is interesting. So he yeah. might have had a red beard, or sure. because he was really good at violence. Could have been. But he doesn't do any kind of punitive measures to murder Duncan's family, although Duncan's wife and her kids run away. And he has at least two sons, Malcolm and Donaldy. Yeah. Who I'd, are I'd run away too. featured in the thing. Uh, now... 
There is one other person that doesn't like Macbeth at all. His name is Crinan. Crinan? Crinan. Crinan is Duncan's dad, and he is an abbot. He's the abbot of Dunkel. Oh, okay. Now, abbots are powerful people. Huh? The abbeys are uh, gathering points. So this is a time, and this would never happen nowadays, but this is a time when the church basically would sell offices. You would pay to be a priest uh, or a higher priest, if you mm -hmm. were a priest already, to be a bishop. Being an abbot is a big deal because abbeys have, they don't have to pay taxes. That's a big thing. Yeah. They're allowed to have market days, <coughs> and they get to take money from those markets. Mm. So this is a profitable enterprise. This is a very wealthy man. And wealthy men at the time hire soldiers because they need them. Sure. They also tend to, to buy more land. All your stuff. Yeah, you got to protect. The more stuff you have, the more you need to protect it. Yeah. It's kind of good to not have a lot of stuff. Yeah. In, at any point, really? I, I don't know. I'm not a person who thinks uh, got to have stuff. Sure. But this guy had stuff. That's and tough. he's really mad that his son died. Mm. And he's lost a lot of clout now because, well, my son's not the king anymore, so I can't just do whatever I want. Yeah. yeah. Boo hoo. Boo hoo. So he starts to kind of foment rebellion. He's like, yeah, I don't like this guy. Anybody else feel the same? Uh, and he gets some followers to join him. Sure. Well, he's an abbot. He's, he's an abbot. Probably good at getting followers. <laughs> at the sermons. Yeah. One and, last message. You know, <laughs> How about this guy? How about this guy? Uh, instead of uh, paying a tithe today, you mm. can just help me fight Macbeth. Well, he gets some support. And of See course, you next Sunday. Macbeth can't sit there and let anybody stir up a rebellion against yeah, him. That's, that's new. That's bad. Yeah. Ba rebellion bad. Sure. Right? Uh, especially when it's just over, well, just over, but it's over a family thing and it's over the death of the son, so he's not going to stop. There's no talking to this guy. There's no negotiating with him. So they go to war. Yeah. At the Battle of Dunkeld, Crennan is killed, along with his other son, Maldred. Maldred's a cool name. It's yeah. like Mordred. It's Maldred. Like, he's like, Maldred, that's just bad yeah. and scary. Because Mal is bad and Dread is scary. It's Maldred. Okay. Yep. You bad, scary guy. Yeah. Okay. Scary. Obviously, it's a Scottish name, so it doesn't mean any of those. Sure, things. sure. But I like it. the Latin version. That, that's a terrifying name. Yeah, Maldred. <laughs> Maldred. Yes. So the Battle of Dunkeld, uh, Macbeth puts down this rebellion, and he has basically saved his kingdom. Sure. Um, and also killed an abbot. And he killed an abbot. So now he has to establish a new abbot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who does. wants this job? Yep. We'll, we'll the, clean up the... There's a line probably around oh. the building. Of, yeah. yeah, I want the job because it's still profitable. Yeah. We just, you know... Just don't, don't, don't foment rebellion. Don't foment rebellion <laughs> and I think we'll be okay. Yeah. Maybe. All right. So, Crinan's gone. Macbeth's power is secure again. Yep. 1045. Um, Marion Scotus, so this is a, a monk, and um, took on the name of Marion because he's one of the Marion order. Okay. And Scotus is the Scot of the Scot. Oh, nice. He writes in the uh, Chronicle Clara, that's the other Chronicle, Chronicle Clara. Uh, that Macbeth makes a pilgrimage to Rome in 1050. A bad king does not do that. A weak king cannot go and leave and go on a pilgrimage. So what yeah. a pilgrimage is, for those who don't know, the concept of it is you go to a holy place mm -hmm. to pray, and you go, you're, if you're a king, you don't go with your fancy clothes, you don't go with a big army, you don't go, it, it's not about you yeah. showing your power, it's about you showing humility and putting forth the effort to basically walk to a holy site. Uh, the most hardcore of the pilgrims would basically wear like a burlap sack and a rope around the waist and go barefoot until they got there. And you were not supposed to mess with pilgrims or hermits or people like that. Even like bit, uh, bandits and brigands didn't hassle these people because, first of all, they have nothing, typically. They have enough to get there and they have food. Yeah. And that's about it. Enough to buy some souvenirs. They might have some stuff for souvenirs. Now, apparently, though, Macbeth did bring money. Oh, because good. while he was there, he handed out, uh, it's described as, he handed out coins like seed. Oh. It was like he was just to the poor. He was just handing out money to the poor. Hmm. Which is another big deal. It's nice. sure, to yeah. give if you have. So he didn't go there and, like, demand stuff from the Pope. He didn't make a big splashy entrance other than he went there as a hermit and gave money to the poor people. Which is a big deal. Yeah. So we can assume from this that this is not the act of a tyrant. This is not the act of an evil person. Yeah. This is the act of a, a genuine 
Man, how did McVeigh's PR team work? They got such a. Well, we'll get there. We'll get there. Um, so he's <laughs> he he's well respected. He's doing a really good job, evidently. For ten years, he was king, and no problems. If you're able to leave your country unattended and walk to Rome, yeah, you. You're doing, doing right. a good job. Yeah, You're doing okay. all right. There aren't a lot of kings who do that. Normally, they would just go on crusade, and then they have an army of death with them, and they yeah. just cut everybody down. Uh, in 1052, though, there's some stuff going on in England that is a little shaky. Uh-oh. Uh, there are Normans. Mm-hmm. So we know who the Normans are. They invaded, eventually, England. Yeah. And they are in, in the, the royal court at the time. Now... Because of rising hostilities and a shift in who's the king, uh, because I believe Edward died, so now there is, um, Edward the Confessor uh, dies. Now there's, uh, Godwinson I think is the, is the king. Uh, but whatever, He's, there's this king in England. Sure. He does not want any Normans involved in his court. Yeah. He doesn't want them there. He, they're foreigners. He doesn't like their having any power or hmm. authority. So he kicks them out. Well, Macbeth, accepts them as exiles oh, what a of court. Guy. This is not a great political move. No. It's seen as a uh, bad move. It's seen as him showing favor to England's enemies. Yeah. So I don't know if this is used as a pretext for this, but the English decide to invade Scotland. No, no. It's a whole thing. Now, also at this time, Malcolm and Donald Bain are in England or possibly Ireland. Yeah. Uh, but their mother is like trying to get support to put her boy on the throne so that she can get back to Scotland and then also restore the throne to Tell us about you, Mom. Yep. So she's probably the entire time that Macbeth is in Scotland being king, she's like, Look what he did to my boys. Yeah, I'm not sure. So she's driving a wedge between England and Scotland, and I think this accepting the exiles is a problem. Yeah. And they do not like this. So uh, a fellow named Seward, who is a character in Macbeth, Mm -hmm. gathers an army together. It is not 10,000 men. There is no way they would rally 10,000 men to go north into Scotland. They just don't have the numbers. When the Norman invasion happens in 1066, the biggest army they could muster together is about 6,000 men. So there's no way they can have 10,000 men go into the north. So it's another license with uh, the numbers. Uh, Seward goes north, and at the Battle of Dunsinane... Which is a hill. Yeah. Dunsinane Hill is mentioned in Macbeth. There is no mention of bringing Burnham Wood to Dunsinane in the historical chronicles. They may have marched from Burnham Wood to Dunsinane Hill. Yeah. There's a Burnham Wood, though? There is a Burnham Wood. There you go. Uh, so, Seward invades with mm-hmm. his army. It's He loses about 1,000 guys in the Battle of Dunsinane. Macbeth loses 1,500. Uh, it, the numbers could be more. They could be less. Mm-hmm. He loses. Yeah. Macbeth loses. Now, Macbeth does not die at Dunsany. Okay. Uh, Macbeth's wife does not kill herself. Yeah. Uh, she's she's kind of a non-entity in the history. She's not considered a mad woman. Um, his son, Luluk, does not die. But Macbeth is kind of driven back because he's lost. Um, back to Moray? Back to Moray, probably. Yeah. Uh, but he kind of has to bounce around now. Uh-oh. Now, the seat of, uh, of at the time... I should have written it down, is not Edinburgh, which is where uh, the head of Scotland lives nowadays. And okay. also at this time, most kingdoms, uh, the king travels. They, they hold court wherever they feel like it. So it's not like they took the capital city and that was at Dunsinane. That was just where the battle took place. Right. So, and he probably ruled from Moray for most of the time because that's his power base. That's where all his money comes from. That's where all his friends are. That's where his most loyal subjects are going to be. And that's his home. Yeah. This battle doesn't go well. The English are pretty thorough. They don't do like a, this isn't like in Braveheart where the English just start, you know, rampaging and pillaging and killing everybody. This is a political thing where they're trying to dethrone the king and replace him. But for three years, Macbeth clings to life. He's he's still the king, yep. he's still in charge. <laughs> he said clings to life. Was he injured? He, wasn't in, he might have been injured, oh. but I mean clings to life like he clings to power. He's, oh, he's still able to, to hang on, and he's still able to rule things, and he's still able to be the king. Yeah. So that means it's not a complete and total destructive victory for the English. But they beat his army, and now he's, he's kind of on the back foot. 
Uh, there were probably some skirmishes, uh, and then at a lesser battle, the Battle of Lumphanan, Lumphanan? Macbeth gets ambushed and he gets killed. Oh, that's such in, an unfortunately yeah. named battle. In, yeah, mm-hmm. Lumphanan, and mm-hmm. then he dies. Mm. Gets his lumps at Lumphanan. Oh, sorry. So, Bethy. Macbeth rules for 17 years. Mm. The play Macbeth makes it seem like he has a very short reign. Sure. Relatively yes. short. Yeah. And it's bloody and savage and awful. Yeah. But we know from two chronicles and a prophecy, I think there's even a third chronicle that, that might have been in there, but I only know of the, the Clara and the, the Anglo-Saxon. But those speak to him being a, a good king. Yeah. Uh, all the local records speak of him being... Nice enough guy, throwing uh, out nice money. Nice enough guy. He gave... Like fighting defensive battles. Mostly fighting defensive battles, not invading other countries. Yeah. Uh, seems to get along with his, his yeah. people inside his country. He has to fight, uh, put down a rebellion. But if he didn't, the guy would just have burnt the whole country to the ground sure. in revenge for his son. He seems nice and almost uh, not noteworthy, noteworthy at all. Really. really, he's not. That This is a surprisingly small episode because sure. there's not a ton about him. And if he was this monster... There would be so much information. Sure. The worse you are, or 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 if you're doing all these great battles or all this other stuff, the bigger deal you are. And yeah. those people are usually kind of the bastards of history. The the most famous people in history are not usually good people at yeah. this point. They're it's warmongers. But like you said, he's not really noteworthy except for his pilgrimage, uh, putting down a rebellion, and being a man of peace, yeah. which is boring historically. Yeah. So And dramatically. And dramatically. A different history was written, like 500 years later. Oh. I'm going to pull it up because I, I forgot it. So I did all my research for this last week, and I forgot some little bits. <laughs> <All right. laughs> uh, it the point being, see, I have plenty of time, so I could just look it up. The, the historian who wrote this later history yeah. bases it on the opinions of survivors. Oh. And the winners. So they all paint Macbeth as a tyrant and a monster. Oh. None of it is historically accurate. Now here's another little wrinkle. After Macbeth dies, Malcolm does not become king. Macbeth's successor becomes king. His adopted son, yeah. Lulach, who rules for about a week. Oh, that's a short reign. And Malcolm assassinates him. Yeah, boy. He has him murdered. Okay. And... That's 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 the end of Macbeth's line. Yikes. Like, because Macbeth didn't have any other kids. Yep. So this not bad guy <laughs> gets the power by he rises up from the ashes of his father being murdered, literally burns his enemy to death. Or maybe he didn't. He might not have even done that. He might not have done any kind of aggressive acts, because he would have had to wait like 30 years to strike back for his father's death. Yeah. And he, or 10 years from when his dad died, but that's possibly not what happened. And it might have been Malcolm who had him killed because Malcolm was a king and you don't mess with the king because, well, you just don't. He's a king. But he was, he might have been lashing out because his brother got killed. And so for all we know, Macbeth did not ever attack anybody first. He fought defensive battles, like you said, but he might have never done had a cool revenge story or anything like that. He might have just been some some Mormare's son who had an unfortunate childhood and then grew into a powerful man who other people supported and really wanted to be king, and they were really happy about it, and it was foreign invaders who deposed him. Uh-huh. And then when Malcolm got the throne, or wanted the throne, and he saw it within his reach, he murders a, basically a kid. Um, so Malcolm's a bad guy. Malcolm's kind of a bad guy. Uh, so Malcolm III winds up having a, a very, very long reign. Um, I think it's a 50-year reign. Yikes. Something like that. It's it's ludicrously long reign. Yeah. Um, but here's here's where we, we talk about the play versus this reality. So yeah. in the play, uh, Macbeth starts out as uh, he's a thane, which is not a Scottish title. That's a Viking title yeah. uh, of Cawdor. He's the more mayor. He's the earl of... Uh, Moray, yep. and he got that without Duncan. He got that on his own. He was born to it, lost it, and got born it back. It. So that was his. He was not given that. Uh, again, Macbeth is portrayed as um, 
a great warrior, which from what we know, he could fight. He was, <coughs> he was able to win most of the battles he fought. It was only when he was badly outnumbered yeah. and then got ambushed. Those are the two battles he lost, and the, the battles he loses are the ones that matter the most. That's true. They typically get you killed. Yeah. Uh, but his rival, or the guy he replaces, is Duncan, who's seen as this old, kindly, gentle, sainted king. And yeah. he's none of those things. Nobody in Scotland really liked him. Like, he had some followers. He had his dad. He had his brothers. But he is not this well-respected king who everybody worships. Uh, there was no battle that is known of where there was a big rebellion and Duncan fought it, and then the the Norse come in from the Orkney Islands. But that is a reference to the Viking saga as well. Oh, okay. They talk about that at the beginning of, the, of, of Macbeth, that there's this battle, and they're fighting against... Uh, these northern invader types who are probably these the Orkney Vikings yep. and then they get stabbed in the back by a, a different noble and then Macbeth kills everybody well Duncan lost that war okay so that's that's a myth that's not, yeah that's not that didn't happen uh, Macbeth was not given a new title by the king ever that he earned everything he had like we said and Macbeth, when he finally does become king, it wasn't because he murdered the previous king. The previous king invaded his, his land and tried to murder him, yeah. and he fought him on the battlefield and won. And then so everybody still, was like... So still killed him. He still killed him. He might not have killed him directly. Yeah. He, right. he was probably fighting. Because this was the time where, you know, if you're, the, if you're a warrior, if you're a lord, you're fighting. Yeah. Like, that's just the rules. That's, you have to. Sure. Unless you're older or you have some kind of infirmity, then you're, you're allowed. Uh, there are times where it's, oh, he's a really brilliant tactician. Don't let him near the field. <laughs> he's terrible at fighting. Right. Um, or if you're a king, sometimes you don't fight. But Macbeth, If you're a lazy king. If you're a lazy king. But Macbeth fought. Yeah. And he beat him. Yeah. Fair and square, defensive battle, then Duncan dies. When Macbeth takes over, people are happy about it. They're the, the, the majority of the nobles supported Macbeth, and that's why Duncan attacked him in the first place. Macbeth did not do any kind of tyrannical, sneaky assassination thing. He certainly wasn't motivated to do anything by his wife, um, who had apparently loved, but they never had kids. So he probably he probably could not have kids, because yeah. we know she can. Um, the fact that he adopted her child is a huge thing, and Luluk is not even mentioned in the play Macbeth, although they do talk about... Uh, Lady Macbeth says that she has given suck to a babe. Sure. So she knows that she's had children. Uh, in one horrible version of it, uh, in a film, they try to suggest that they lost their baby. Okay. And they show them burying the child at the beginning. And that's like the whole point of the story is they've both been driven a little mad because they recently mm, lost a child. Yeah. But that did not happen yeah. uh, that we know of. But most of the play didn't happen, it sounds like. Yep. Okay. Uh, Let's see where we uh, So, yeah, Macbeth, uh, during his reign in the play, he is written off as a, a bloody-handed tyrant who was, he was an untitled king, meaning, like, the people didn't choose him, which, by the way, the people don't choose the king anyway. Yeah. It's not like it's an election. Uh, he was, he had a better claim to the throne than Duncan ever did, according to Scottish tradition, according to Tanistry, but he didn't try to take it. So he just kind of had it thrust upon him, and then Duncan took it badly and died. We do know that Malcolm and Donald Bain fled. Now, they would not have been adults at this point. They were kids. Oh. They were fled with their mom. So they didn't flee on their own. They did not go, oh, we are out. We are kids. <laughs> we are five, and we are gone. So mom takes the whole family, basically. is like, I don't know what this guy's going to do. I'm going to run away. Sure. There's nothing to indicate that Macbeth would have killed them. He already didn't kill the family of the people who killed his family. Look at all the people I haven't killed. Look at everybody I haven't killed. Why would you think I would kill most people? Really, really, statistically, most people. Statistically, most people. Yeah. Maybe I set a fire. <laughs> We're not sure about that one. But it could have been lightning. True. It could have been, been lightning. Act of God. Yeah. Bad wiring. Bad wiring in the Middle Ages. Yep. Which is the worst kind it's of It's probably really bad, it's yeah. really, really bad. They just basically throw a bunch of wires on top of it. If we ever get electricity in here, fellas, we're in trouble. We're in trouble. <laughs> this wire Where's is that off. fire marshal again? Mm -hmm. It's a good thing he died in the last fire. Mm -hmm. So Macbeth, we know, is, like you said, he's kind of a boring king. Yeah. There's not a lot written about him. So 
this this idea that um, in the play the sky is black and the misery reigns supreme because he is this awful monster and yep. uh, everything goes crazy and and terrible. Obviously not. Uh, it's considered a good enough place that when the Normans want to leave England, they are invited into his court. And like, yeah, this sounds great. Sure. They could have gone back to Normandy, where they're from, which is nice. That's the coastal France. It's yeah. beautiful there. And they're like, oh, no, we'll go to Scotland. That sounds great. Hmm. Good golfing. Good guess, golfing. Maybe. But so he's not this bloody-handed tyrant. He's okay. not this monster. Yeah. And then 10 years into his reign, he leaves to go on a pilgrimage. And in the play, he's portrayed as this godless monster who, yeah. who's just, he's, he betrays his king, he betrays his, and murders his best friend. He has children massacred. He has entire families put to the sword. Castles bo- burned to the ground. It's an exciting play, folks. It's a really exciting play. And it's great drama, but it is 100% fictional account of who this Macbeth guy was. Hmm. Then... After all of this, uh, when Malcolm eventually has his expert swordsman soldier guy, Macduff, who's not a real person, uh, he fights Macbeth because Macbeth kills his family. He kills Macbeth, avenging them. It's a great scene. Uh, And the tyrant's put down, and Malcolm becomes king. Also not true. Malcolm does not become king immediately after Macbeth dies. Uh, also, Macbeth doesn't die at Dunsinane. Macbeth lives for three more years after this f- climactic battle of Dunsinane. And then dies in battle. Yeah. Uh, but at least they got that right. Macbeth does die in battle. <laughs> he does not die a coward. He doesn't run away. He's, uh, he's, a, he's a warrior to the end. So that's something, I yeah. guess, that they got right. Um, who does take over, like we talked about, is Lulak. And Lulak is kind of a... I, his he's kind of considered this unfortunate character oh, yeah. because first of all he was maybe simple they're not sure okay um, but that could also be the guys who won the war just trying to make sure. them look bad yeah. kind of like how they referred to Macbeth as the red as if he was this savage killing machine and he wasn't that we know of a savage murderer so Lulak reigns for a couple days and Malcolm murders him. So Malcolm is portrayed as this kind of uh, he's clever and he he knows that in the play he's he, Macbeth is trying to kill him so he he uses like lots of uh, wordplay and uh, describes himself as this horrible horrible person trying to test Macduff to see if Macduff will actually be loyal to him and then he reveals actually I'm a good person and I don't have all these bad things about me and I'm going to be a good king I was just testing you, Macduff's elated, and then they go and they fight this battle and they kill Macbeth. But we know that Malcolm was a backstabbing murderer <laughs> and a bit of a bastard because yeah. he assassinated somebody who was, even in their version of it, described as like a simpleton. So he just murders this poor guy who's never did anything to anybody except yeah. be adopted. Yeah. And he wasn't even born right. He wasn't even born for this. Like he just got murdered. Uh, so Malcolm, the reason why this is done. Yes. It's because later on, Malcolm's descendant is James the Sixth, who becomes James the First and Sixth of England, who we've talked about. Yeah. Remember the gunpowder plot and all yeah, that yeah. jazz? Badly he, named James. Badly by named by James. Badly named Jim. Badly titled, I guess. Badly titled Jim. Yeah. Bad titled Jim. So First what was going on at the time is Shakespeare bit of a famous guy maybe you've heard of William Shakespeare was writing plays for the longest time he wrote plays for Queen Elizabeth when Elizabeth was uh, going to die she knew she was dying she was old she chose as her successor her nephew James Mm. James is Scottish he's already the king of Scotland and she did this specifically to unite England and Scotland together forever forever that was her plan so you hear that, Shakespeare Scotland? Forever. wrote a really flattering play about King James's ancestor, Malcolm, mm. to make him seem like he was this heroic figure, yeah. and the guy that he usurped power from was a monster and a bastard, which is 
basically how Shakespeare writes a lot of his plays is to color the enemies of the Tudor family as monsters. Richard III is done like this, where Richard III, they don't actually know if he did all of these horrible things that he's accused of, but they're sure going to paint it like he did yeah. because Elizabeth's family won that war. Yeah. So he's not going to, and he wants money from them. <laughs> he does not want to, to look like uh, he's taking, you know, liberties and being kind to the enemies of the royals who are running the show at the time yeah. and who have no problem just decapitating people. They don't have a problem killing Catholics. Uh, when the Protestants are in charge and when the uh, Catholics are in charge, they have no problem killing Protestants. So Shakespeare has to walk this fine line. You didn't the, like the third act? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This isn't like a condemnation of Shakespeare. I think this is just a politically savvy writer mm. who took some liberties with some things. And he did base his play on one of the historical accounts, but that historical account was written hundreds of years after well, that's what I was, fact, was that actually the, it wasn't necessarily Shakespeare doing it, but he... No, this other guy wrote it, and Shakespeare's like, well, all these other versions say that didn't happen, but here's a juicy one. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna write a nice play about it. And Macbeth is a very compelling tragedy as a result of that. It's a very interesting play. It's very, very well written. It's, it's fun and exciting. It's almost an action movie compared to some of the other plays because yeah. it, it's shorter. It's the shortest tragedy. Um, as was explained to us by our director, Carolyn. Thanks for that information. I didn't know that. Huh? Um, even without editing or anything, it's it's the fastest one. That's why it makes for like great movies. Yeah. Because it's, it's fast. And it has this rising building action and this climactic battle, and that's yeah. great. But the history of it is much more complex than that. And like you said, it's it's really interesting to me that like, Beth is just kind of a milk toast king. He's not... He's not yeah, yeah. a he's not a monster like he's he's not a, a great king because at the time being a great king means you have to go and murder people and, and fight big battles uh, and that makes you great all the effort but honestly if this was my king nowadays I you'd be pretty happy with that sure yeah oh it's we have prosperity and we have so much peace that you can just leave yeah. for months to go on a pilgrimage that's pretty cool. But it's not it's not spicy. It's not as entertaining. And yeah, so this this was definitely written as like a, a propaganda piece, basically, at, to to James to say, "Hey, your ancestor was pretty awesome." Yeah. And even within the the play, uh, there's a part where Macbeth is uh, shown uh, a mirror, basically, or uh, yeah. a glass, and and at least in our version, there's a glass, and he, he talks about how he can see this line of kings. Yeah. The, originally, there's supposed to be all these apparitions that like walk on, but then he says, and what's this I see? And it's it's this endless line of kings that just keep going and going and going because Malcolm's family line through marriage and other connections. It's not like a straight line because yeah. there's all these marriages that happen and it's, you know, it's the Middle Ages and stuff gets a little wonky. But he is connected through this weedy tapestry back to uh, Malcolm and Duncan. So that's Macbeth. And I did that oh. record time. Well, look at that. That's all I got. Uh, I, I wanted more because I was like, this is going to be super compelling and the real Macbeth's going to be super interesting. And he's just, he's a good king. Yeah, nice guy, got <laughs> a bad a nice rap. Good, got a bad rap. Yeah. So yeah, don't believe the hype. <laughs> Fake news. <laughs> Macbeth is actually a pretty go pretty all right guy. He's a pretty good king. Well, yes. Don't believe necessarily all the history. Make sure you know who writes history. But do support local theater. Do support local shows. theater. Yeah, this is not a condemnation of the play. Remember, Plays are supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be exciting. If it was, this would be the most boring play ever. Oh, like really? This if, if it was just Macbeth's life, they'd be like, it's seventeen years of peace. <laughs> like, ah, it's a seventeen-hour-long play. <laughs> it's a yep. You get a little action in the beginning if you give him the revenge story that yeah. he killed his uncle after his uncle killed his dad. Yeah, and there's a that. little bit in the it, where he he fights. Duncan, and then there's a little bit where he fights the rebellion, and then there's the battles at the end. But it it's really long gaps of, of peace in between all of this craziness. Well, there we go. There you go. That's Macbeth. All right. Well, thanks, Will. Thanks, Mike. I learned uh, some things. Yeah. I don't know which one's true now, because they both seem true. I guess that's how history works. This is true. Sure. <laughs> the all other right. one is not. I guess I'll take your word for it because I mean, you're alive. All well, right. You could listen. You could just go read the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle. So uh, if you have any uh, uh, comments or uh, corrections, uh, put those in the, in the comment section below. And if you know Scottish really well or know where I can look to pronounce some of these names. Sure. Because they're really tricky and I tried not to butcher them too badly, but yeah. it's really You probably pronounce language. things from the different part of your throat. Yeah. Yep.
Uh, either way, uh, comment, uh, like, and subscribe, obviously. Yep. And uh, uh, there was a uh, what was the actual date? Uh, Macbeth. Uh, was oh, it? it was uh, uh, 14 August 1040. That yeah. is uh, when Duncan dies. Oh, okay. Was, so when that, he. Yep, that's the Battle of uh, Pit Gevney. Okay. Um, there's another name for that battle too. There's like so many different names for some of these things, yeah. but uh, that was when he becomes king. Got it. All right. Uh, we'll be uh, doing this again next week, and we're going to be discussing the death of William Wallace. Sticking in Scotland. Sticking but we're going Scotland. ahead 300 years. Okay. Ish. So uh, 300 short years later. Yep. But you don't have to wait that long. Nope. You can wait a week or so, Ish. depending on if we get our act together. We've got to get our act together. So, yeah, that's uh, 23rd August, 1305. All right. Thanks for uh, spending your time with us. Thank you.